All right, so here we are packaging DES224, and uh, so far there's me and Sarah. So Sarah, ask me your question again about the, please. Um, what do you think about texturing on package design? Okay, so texturing on package design. Anything is possible, anything is fair game. The bottom line is that you must understand that there's a shelf full of product. And your product is one of the products on that shelf competing for the dollar of the customer. And what is probably going to get your product purchased is, number one, obviously, if the customers know your product and like your product, then they're going to buy your product. They're going to look for it and buy it. But if your product isn't one that is as known, then what you have to do is you have to create a project, a, a, a package that jumps out, grabs their attention, and makes them gravitate to it, pick it up off the shelf, and walk away with it. Now, there's an awful lot of different things that goes into making that happen. And one of them certainly is the use of elements such as backgrounds, color, the way you divide the uh, panel up, uh, using color, the way that you work with the labeling type, any kind of symbolism that you work into the whole thing. So it's a, it's a total package that you're working on here. It's not just any one single element. It's a, it's a combination of a number of things that, that go into this. And just so that you know, many big companies do a, a lot of research and testing of product packaging. They'll bring in consumers. They'll pay people to come in and they'll run packaging by them, bounce the images off them, and get reaction from the, uh, the people. And as a matter of fact, they even do some sort of testing where they do retina scanning. And all, they do all kinds of things to see what the, what the uh, customer that they brought in the, the focus group, what they're looking on, are looking at. They, they spend tons of money doing this. So, you know, again, if, if you're in a big company, this is what's going on. A smaller company, I'm sure, have limited resources to do these things, but that's the kind of thing that you have to realize. It, you're competing. It's a competition. And you really have to be sharp. Your, your imagery have, has to be sharp, has to be relevant, has to be uh, targeted so that the person gets the idea that this is the one that I want out of all of them. Again, you have to be drawn to it, and then once you're drawn to it, the information has to be such that the person takes the next logical step, which is to not just look at it, but actually reach out and grab it and put it in their cart. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that um, if, if it makes sense to put some sort of a texture in what kind of texture did you have in mind? What were you thinking about? Did you have something particular in mind that you were thinking about? Well, yeah, I was thinking like the organic paper texture would be cool with the tea box because we were talking about in the discussion about recyclable material. Yep. So you're using some sort of a material that kind of is organic-y looking? I was going for that because I picked the bamboo tea and I thought that was like more organic anyways. Okay. Yeah. Well, is this, is this texture that you're talking about uh, a nice texture? I mean, does it come off looking visually nice? It does, but I thought that uh, it's it's a different look, you know, than the yeah. whole vessel thing because it gives it a texture. Yeah. But I thought it was okay. I just didn't know if that was okay in your standard. Um, I'm the type of person that right now, if you if you understand really what's going on here, we have four weeks of creative playing with this. I mean, I I'm not going to want to uh, I'm not going to want to sit here and tell you that you shouldn't try things. There's four weeks I want you to try things. I think it's very important for you to try creatively. Hi, Samantha, how are you doing? Do you have a mic? Can you turn the mic on and, and say hi to Sarah and myself? Can you hear me? I don't know whether she hears me or not. Mm -hmm. Let's see if she turns the mic on. Um, yeah, I, I want you to understand there's, um, this is this is this is create creative time as far as I'm concerned and play time. I really encourage you to have fun with this. Uh, once you get working, is that Samantha? What happened? Hello. Hi, Samantha. Yes. Hello. Hi. Turn your mic. Can you turn your mic down just a little bit? A little loud. 
Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I think we've got it equalized. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, just follow my train of thought for a moment, Samantha. Uh, so back to what I was saying, Sarah. Be creative and, and have fun with this. If you're having fun, it will show in your final creation, your, your final piece. I noticed that when I took a look at some of the milk cartons, there were people I could, and, and, and some of the tea packaging as well. I noticed that there were people that definitely were having fun. You could tell just by the, the, the level of creativity being employed that they were having fun. There were others that were just kind of doing it because they had to do it. And maybe they weren't comfortable in the program and that made them uncomfortable. So creatively, they weren't really getting into it because they were having trouble dealing with the program. You know, you got to realize that we're in a group of people and each one of you has your own level of knowledge in the program Adobe Illustrator. Samantha, for instance, have you worked with Illustrator much? No, not much. Okay. Did you have trouble with this? Uh, no, just um, for me, um, I just got a promotion at work, and I've been working a lot of extra hours. Okay. Well, that's okay. There's no problem. I mean, you got a promotion, and you're, and you're working extra hours. I mean, that's great in a way. I, I, is it the work, the work that you're doing you like? Yeah. Good. That's great, then. Sarah, how about you? Are you okay with Illustrator? Is this a program that you're familiar with, or is this new to you? I'm familiar with it. Oh, okay. Do you like it? Do you like the program? Mm -hmm. It's totally one of my favorites. Oh, good. Yeah, it should be because it's one of the most underrated and most valuable programs that you're going to use as a graphic designer. Uh, I, I use it daily, um, and it is just amazing what you can do with it. A lot of people just think, well, you know, you can make simple graphics. You can make extraordinary graphics with it if you take the time to really master the program. And... Um, most of the stuff that you see me do through the course, I mean, since obviously it's, it's uh, um, Illustrator is the program that we're using, all of those things I created in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So you could do it too. I mean, it's nothing that special that, you know, you, you just need to know how to do it and you need to have the gumption to go in and try to do it. You will ultimately succeed. So Samantha, I got a question for you. Are you going to submit something for tomorrow night for our, our critique? I am. Okay, good. Uh, and will you have some questions for us for tomorrow night? I mean, the other thing, too, is I want you to ask me anything about anything that we covered so far. I'll try to answer that or demonstrate it. So think about that as well. Is there anything that we worked on through the course of this that you're not dead clear with? that I could maybe try to clarify for you. So that's what this will be tomorrow night. It'll be two things, uh, basically question and answer and also um, a demonstration of some of your work and a critique of some of your work. Okay, does that sound cool? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, Samantha, are you, are you more or less caught up or are you behind on some stuff? No, I'm all caught up. Okay. Um, were, you, uh, were you okay with my criticisms of your work so far? Are you okay with what I said to you? Were they clear and helpful? Yes, they were. And, oh. yeah, I knew what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, get, I don't get into a great deal of detail, I, and I don't cover every single flaw that I see. What I do is I, I kind of do a high-level high overview, and I think about what I'm looking at, and I say, okay, what would be the most logical and the first things that I would address? And that's what I kind of talk to you about, hoping that you, it, I do it clearly enough that you can go in and make those changes. And then, of course, if you do, I can pretty much assess that you did, and uh, you know, we'll move from there. Um, but again, we only got four weeks here, so and you got – each week a more difficult assignment you know what I mean each each week the assignments get a little bit more complicated so mm -hmm. it's kind of difficult but the other thing too is that if you really know what you're doing and you really like the projects that you're working on you can always go back after the fact after the course you could always go back and you could um, uh, refine these for your portfolio if you think they're good enough for your portfolio and I would recommend that you do that because ultimately, you know, you do have to put together a portfolio. All right? Right. Okay. So uh, is there anything either one of you want to ask me before I kind of move on? 
No. Nothing at all? You're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, packaging, design 224. Um, this week we learn about the dye line, although I think you, you got an idea of the dye line already, right, guys? You kind of know what the dye line is. Any of you, do either one of you um, have a question about what a dye line really is? No. No? The cutout line, right? Or the folding lines in the cutout line? The, 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 well, Samantha, what you tell me, what is a dye line? A dye line is the outline of the package, and uh, it shows you the lines, the bleed lines, where you need to have the color go to and all your images go to and the cut lines. That's what it is, the cut line. So, so actually, there are, there, are, um, there are three basic lines that you, that you see. The mm -hmm. interior lines, which are usually in a gray and sometimes in a dashed configuration, that sort of symbolizes where the folds of each panel will be. And they don't print. They just basically are there for a visualization, okay? The die line is the actual edge of the carton that indicates where it is going to be cut out of the bigger sheet. So that's what the die line is. And the bleed line is the line where any element that is going to print to the edge, it must bleed to an eighth of an inch, and that's where that bleed line is. So there's three lines that we're concerned with. The die line is essentially what is the shape of the piece as it gets cut out before it's folded, gets cut out of the big sheet, okay? Okay. Yeah. Packaging, okay, exterior bottle package design. And um, you need to be submitting this by the end of the week, obviously, 11.59. So um, just for all of your information, for anybody that hasn't submitted things or are still in the process of refining and resubmitting, please understand Saturday, 11.59 p.m. is the last day of the mod this week, and it will be the deadline for any submissions. Anything after that time, I cannot grade. So whatever you guys want to do, make sure it is in to me by that point. Also, for those of you who would like to come in for a critique or if you need some help, um, I have in our announcements. Have you guys seen the announcements yet? Have you go look? Have you gone look at the announcements, Samantha and Sarah? Yes. Mm, no. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. When you get a chance, go and take a look at the announcements, uh, Samantha. One of the announcements I have in there. Uh, Sarah, am I right? Is my hours in Blackboard Collaborate? Uh huh. Right? Did you see them? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So if either one of you guys, or anyone for that matter, needs to come in any one of those times to to have me take a look at something, if you want a private critique of it, I have I have other people, students come in constantly. Oh, I just want you to sh I want you to look at what I'm doing. I'm going to submit it soon. I, I need you to just check it out and see if there's anything that I could improve on it. And I, I generally give them a critique. So that's what one of the things that I do in there. Um, so if you have a problem with anything that you're working on, you need some help, I will help you. If not, and you want just a critique, bring it and show it to me, and I'll give you a critique, and then uh, you'll be good to go. All right? Uh, the assessment. So what we're going to be doing this week, just like we did last week, we're going to be creating a box. And this box is going to be for uh, a bottle of wine. So instead of doing a milk carton like we did last week, we're going to actually create a box for the wine. And we worked on the wine labeling last week, right? So you, you guys probably got some graphics already started for your wine label and your wine hang tag. Do both of you got that so far? Are you guys with that yet? Yes, but do we have to use that one? Or uh, can we create a whole new wine box? Well, if you've already started, if you've already started on a wine theme, a wine label, do you, do you really want to change it at this point? Yeah, I didn't really like mine. Um, if you're, okay, here's what I would accept then. Uh, if you want to change it, you could go in and change it. You're going to use the same name, and you want to keep it somewhat similar because, again, well, I mean, I guess you could go in and go in another direction if you want. Um, this is a tough call. I guess, I guess ultimately, provided it's the same wine, if you want to improve it, feel free to try okay. to improve it. Yeah. 
I just made up a name and I didn't like the name that I made up, but I want to use the same elements that I used. Okay, so you're going to change the actual name of it. Yeah. Okay, well that's reasonable. Are you going to resubmit the, the other two pieces with the name change as well? Or, or better yet, are you going to, can you incorporate it somehow into your presentation? And I'll, sure. try, I'll show you what you, that you might do that. Have you tried to, is this Samantha that's, that's making this change? Yes. Okay, so Samantha, have you tried working with a 3D model yet of anything? Yeah, I've done, the, I did the tea box and the wine bottle. And how did it go for you? Were you happy with the result? Yes. Okay, so then um, what you could possibly do is you could take and create a, a version of the bottle that has the label attached to it and the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the hang tag attached to it and the label on it. If you would do that mm -hmm. and change the name, then all would be accepted. Okay. Is that cool? And I'm going to show you uh, in a little while when we go into Illustrator, I'm going to show you that. It's going to be one of the things that I'm going to actually show you. Again, I'm uh, just so that you see how I did that, get, get you more of an idea on it. Okay? So, yeah, that's good. And, Sarah, you're okay to go with this? Your, your, your packaging is ready to move on to this, uh, this packaging level? Yep. Okay. All right. Got any ideas, both of you, of what you're going to do with the box? Have you thought of it yet? I was thinking maybe to incorporate a pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a logical thing to do. Um, but have you guys gone in and downloaded your um, your template yet? Yeah. Okay, you got your template. Have you looked at it? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I'm going to play with it a little bit and talk a little bit about it shortly, but uh, good. Okay, so you're good. So, so in other words, you guys have really no issues with anything. You're able to get your... Templates are all right. You understand the uh, the basic parameters of the package, right? Right. Okay. All right, good. All right, so we're in pretty good shape. I, I know that somebody earlier in this mod was saying that they had trouble with their downloads of things. And uh, I, I went in and I think it was corrected, but there were some things that I think there, um, there were a couple of things. I think it was there. Uh, required elements weren't downloading. Did you have any trouble with any of them, or were they okay when you went in for them? They were okay? Mine, mine were all fine. Okay. All right. Uh, so finally, um, as I was saying earlier to you, Sarah, and maybe, Samantha, you might have heard this, always be creative and have fun with this. Uh, the components should have a cohesive visual relationship. Keep in mind your principles of design. Okay, and, and just so that you know, those principles are not the only principles of design. And both of you will learn, I've been doing this now since 1971, if you can imagine that. Uh, and in that period of time, I've learned an amazing amount of stuff. As a matter of fact, it's, you know, there's so much stuff that some of it is so buried in the back of my head that I, you know, it almost surprises me when I think of it. Uh, but you will... You will learn more and more about design and how to work within the constructs of design uh, the longer you, you are in this field. And keep in mind one other very important thing. As you work with people, associates, bosses, many of these bosses and associates will have knowledge that they will, whether they do it on purpose or not, end up sharing with you. I learned something from almost every person that I worked with, even people I hated. There were people that I didn't like at all. I still managed to learn things from them. So that's another thing. You'll learn constantly, and you'll refine your own thinking constantly. And you will do bad things, and you will do good things, because that's how it works. You're, you know, you're not always on the exact same level every day. It would be kind of boring if you were. So, all right, so uh, th that's the end of my uh packaging PowerPoint. Any questions or any thoughts or any statements you want to make before I get rid of that? No. Oh, no, you're good? Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to open here and take a look at, this is the die line for the wine box. This is what we're going to ultimately be working on. This is what it looks like when you get it. There's a couple of things wrong with this in my opinion. Number one, I think I told you that, see these little dash lines here? This is what I was telling you that is the proper way to indicate folding. This is just, all this is is to show how these panels will fold, where they will fold. Uh, the die line, which is right here, 
really, and I don't, I, maybe I have the layers locked. Let's see what I do. I do, yeah. Let me unlock the layers. So this line right here, that is your dye line. The dye line can be black, but I, saw, I tend to make my dye line a dark blue, sort of like this. That's how I like to see my dye line, okay? And now this out here, this is your bleed. What I like to do with my bleed is I like to make my bleed red. That's typical of when you go into a printing environment, what the bleed should be like. So I make my bleed look red. That's the way I like to see my package. And you see how fine the line is there? These lines, it's, it's a point line. You don't have to have, you don't have to have really um, big lines. You just need to have the line there, okay? So any question about that? If you want to go in, when you get this thing, you can go in and you can unlock the layer and you can modify those or you can leave them the way it is. The way they came, uh, I will accept. But I just want you to understand that from a production standpoint, usually red means bleed. And that's why I generally change it to red. And this here is what I generally indicate for my, um, for my dye line. Then inside here, these are just basically gray. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then what? Then what you're going to do is I go show you my wine bottle. So I have my wine bottle here, and I have my my logo here, and then I got this guy over here, which is two labels. This is the label for the front, and some of you, uh, if you take a look down here, we have two things that a lot of people did not put on their labels. Some most people produced a front label. But there are, there's a government warning that has to appear, and there's also a barcode. Because sometimes what happens is they take bottles, they get bottles in a case, or they get bottles that are not in a box, or they take bottles out of the box. And if the bottle's out of the box, uh, and the box gets thrown away, and the bottle's on a shelf, they have no barcode for it. That's why I generally will create a second label to go on the back, and that's what I did here. I have a back label uh, basically for other information. I'll zoom in and you can see what I put on here. And you know, it's like I made this up. I, you know how I made it up? I went in, I did some research, I looked at other labels, and I saw the kind of stuff that were that was on this, and I know I had to have a government warning, and I know I had to have a barcode, so I figured, okay, so I put the the, the logo, very small, tucked in over here. Uh, one long sentence of, of information, which I got from another bottle that was there. You can see it's just very generic text. Now, ultimately, if you were really doing this, you would have some real text that would be supplied to you by a writer. But I just picked this up online. And then I noticed also that a lot of times they'll have a website and they'll have an 800 number. So I just indicated a website and a number there. And then, of course, I put the government warning, which absolutely have to have. So you see, instead of putting that on the front, which in my opinion, would mess up that front label. See how nice that front label looks? It's just basically identity, very simple. I mean, I could have probably put um, uh, wine, you know, a little more wine information on the front, but I didn't. And, uh, you know, again, this is a mock-up. But that's basically what it is. The front label is very simple, very elegant, very design-oriented. The back label is where you, you know, put some very much in required information, okay? Any questions about that? Did you guys have any trouble working out something like this for your labels and your hang tags? You guys are okay with them? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now I have to go to the view menu, fit all in window, and I have my bottle over here. And um, I think, Samantha, you were the one that was talking about <coughs> reworking yours. So do you think – you think that you could put together something sort of like this where you have your bottle and then you would have a label that you would just modify with the name. You just create the name modification on the label and then mm -hmm. just stick a hang tag hanging off of it somewhat similar to that. Think you could pull something like that off? Yeah, I could do that. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see you do the hang tag part again, actually. Sure. That's uh, the only part that I didn't quite follow last time. 
Well, I kind of just stuck mine on there. I didn't, it doesn't look like it's hanging off of it like yours does. Because you know what it is, really? It's just a matter of not being stiff about it. You, you basically go in there and you sort of cockeye the label a little bit, and then mm -hmm. you play around, you create a couple of very simple lines, and then you modify the line slightly. And you know what? As soon as I get done talking here, I will go in and I will do this again and show you how it was done. Okay. okay. It's actually a lot simpler than you really think. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, um, all right. So here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay. And I'm going to get the selection tool. Let's see if this is on a lock layer. Uh, it is. So let me click on this. Hold down the shift key. Click on this. And click on this. And let me just move this off to the side. Okay. So there's the label. Okay, there's really just three elements. There's this little element right here, this little element right here, and my label right here, right? All right, so let's go over to my label then. Let's grab the label. Let's click on the label. Let's over here. Uh, okay, so you can see that that's just part of the label, control Z. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I need a hole in this. So you see that little spot right there? It's not yeah. really a hole, is it? It's, a, it's just a little circle. Right. So let's go edit undo, bring it back, and obviously that, that little circle is in front of that white card there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I, if I click both of these guys, uh, I can come in here and I can use my Shape Builder tool, but I don't, I don't like the Shape Builder tool as much as I like this guy right here. I like coming and use the Pathfinder tool. Now, the Pathfinder tool, you guys familiar with? Oh, my battery's running. A whole, whole emergency. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I didn't want my, ba my, my battery was low. I had to quickly plug it in. Yeah, you guys work with the Pathfinder tool much? Somewhat. Okay, yeah. so if I were to click, these two are selected. If I click this thing, it would make them one piece, and, and this would just disappear, and it would become white. But here, I'm going to take this and use this as called minus front. What's going to happen is it's actually going to take that little circle and cut a hole into this. Okay, so mm -hmm. with this selected and this selected, this in front, I click on that, and now you see how that moves forward, mm -hmm. and now that becomes one piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go edit cut, select this, edit paste in back, and now select the logo, and let's see, is there anything else on that, on that little hang tag? There is that, yes. Select this, okay, and go object group. Okay, so what I've done essentially is I've taken, uh, who's here? Ste Stephanie Watts. Hi, Stephanie. Um, if you have your, let's just hear you say hi. I want to hear the volume of your um, mic. Uh, your mic. Go ahead. Speak to hi. us. Hi. Okay, turn it down just a tiny bit. Okay, is that better? Yeah, much better. So, Stephanie, how you doing? Um, what I'm doing right now is Samantha asked me if I would demonstrate how to take the label and uh, turn the label into a hang, or the, I'm sorry, the hang tag, uh, put the hang tag on the bottle. She wanted me to show her how I did that. So okay. I'm going to show her how to do that. Okay, I would like to see that too. Okay, so you you okay with what I've done so far, uh, Samantha? You, you follow that okay? Yep, yeah, I follow. Click on it, edit copy. I don't have to do this, but I am doing it just so that, you know, come over to my bottle. Where's my bottle? Okay, there's my bottle. And let me go view, zoom out a little bit so I get a little bit more look at this. All right, and edit paste in front. Now, you know what, it pasted it over there. It's not what I wanted. Let me bring it over here. Give me a second, I'm bringing it over. There it is. Okay, so there's my, there is my uh, hang tag. And as you can see, the hang tag over here, let me see if I can bring it back closer so that you get a better look at this. So bring this over a little closer. You can see the hang tag is significantly smaller. One other thing you might want to do is, and that is come over here and grab your group selection tool and click on the group selection tool. Click on that frame and on your stroke, double click on the stroke and put a very light gray stroke around it sort of like that. Now, let me show you why I did that. 
Can you see how that helps to define the edge mm. of that card a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I select this thing and I get my, my rotate tool and I'm simply going to rotate this around. Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I, just so that you know, I'm not going to do this exactly the same way because uh, I'm going to do it similar. Okay, it's going to end up looking slightly different, but I think you'll get the idea. Each time you do this, you're going to do this ever so slightly differently. So I see I rotated that. That's all I really did was I rotated this a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it. I'm going to come down. And I'm going to scale it to a size that I think is, and I didn't get it. Hold on. Click on it. There we go. Bring this down to a size that I think probably is a good size for this which is probably that size right there. Now watch this. You see how when I deselect that, you see how you see white in that hole? Mm -hmm. Watch when I drag that over top of the bottle. You see what it does? Yeah. It shows what's behind it. Why? Because it's like a punch. It's actually been punched out. So between the rotation of this object and punching the hole into this, you get a pretty good idea that this is, in fact, a um, uh, an object You know that's... Uh, that's got a hole in it, and it's uh, it's sort of hanging off of this bottle. So that's really all I did to give that hang tag a, a somewhat realistic look. Okay, uh, Samantha. So that's all there is to it. Did you? Do and you added the shadow stuff. Oh yeah, too. but I would. I'm not doing that yet. I, I'll get to that. That's not yet. I do that oh. sort of as a last minute thing. Okay. You're right, though. I did put a drop shadow on it, and I can show you how to do that. But that's all there is to this. I mean, I'm not going to – I could go in and try to uh, envelope distort it, but I, if I remember correctly, when I did envelope distort it, I didn't like the look. And so I undid the envelope distort, and I just left it sort of hanging like this. I thought, you know what? That works pretty well for me. So that's the first thing. Uh, not too difficult, right, uh, Samantha? No, no, that looks easy. Let me bring it down a little bit. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is come over here, and I'm going to get my pen tool. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click, and then I'm going to come up to about, oh, I don't know, you know, somewhere like around here. Click, and I'm going to just drag out a line something like that, you know. Something like that will work, okay. And then I'm going to make sure that I remove the, uh, the fill, and maybe what I'll do is I'll darken up that line just a touch, sort of like that. There we go. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I actually had this line a tiny bit thicker, maybe 1.5, 1.5. Oh, and by the way, just so that you know, yeah, does that look about the same weight as that to you? Yeah. Oh, it's Good enough for our purposes, I think. Yeah. The, the, the important thing to know is that you can use percentages. You could come up here and go 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, okay, so that you know that. All mm -hmm. right, and now the other thing that I'm going to do is get the pen tool again and come over to somewhere, oh, I don't know, maybe like, uh, oh, I don't know, let's see, right, where would it be? Follow around, it would probably be, where would it be? I forget how I had this one now that I've moved it. I don't know. I'm just going to put it somewhere like, let's see, probably here, I guess. We'll be all right. Click there and then come around to here, click, and let's make something that looks sort of like there. That's good enough. Like I told you, each time you do this, it's going to be slightly different, okay? Uh, and I think you get the general idea, right, gals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so now what I'm going to do yeah. with this is, again, come back here, select it, and maybe make that also 1.5.5. Okay, and now I got my line. Now, if you come in here and take a look at this really carefully, oops, uh, if I come in here and zoom in on this thing, you're going to see something. First of all, you're going to see that this thing doesn't really go anywhere, and neither does this. And if you come up and zoom up a little bit, you'll see that the same situation occurs up here. It kind of like ends in a very odd way, right? But... These are strokes, and you're limited in what you can do with strokes. But if you know Illustrator, I can turn these strokes into graphic shapes, which I can modify. And I do that by selecting them 
and going up to the object menu. Have you ever done this before? Go to path and go outline stroke. Have any of you ever done this before? No, I haven't. No? Okay, so what I'm about to do is take a look. I'll stop for a minute, select this. You see the little line in the middle there? Mm -hmm. That's the path. And there is no fill on this path. The path has got a stroke on it. What I'm about to do is I'm about to ask the program to take that path and make it go bye-bye and turn that stroke into a graphic shape, a fill. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it does. Okay, so I'm going to do it to both of them at the same time because I can. So I select both of these guys, okay? Object, path, outline, stroke. And you see what it did? Look what it did. It turned mm -hmm. that into a stroke, okay? Now that I've done this, I can come in here and I can zoom in quite a bit more and if I'm careful, I can get my direct selection tool. If you remember, the direct selection tool allows you to work on anchor points individually. And I can take this anchor point, and if I'm careful, I can make this anchor point move to a position. I gotta be very careful how I do this. Move it to a position like that. See, see what I did? Mm -hmm. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this one, okay. and I'll and I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to try to move this one to a position like that, okay? And I see that I'm having a little bit of a problem with this thing getting a bit thin here. So what I'm going to probably have to do with this is I'm probably going to have to scoot this out a little bit to thicken that line up again. See that? And look at that. This is what I want you to take a look at. That's pretty good. I mean, when you consider how small this is going to end up being, but do you see how this appears to go behind that now? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So what do you think? Did you guys pull this off? Is that too difficult? No. No. That's you know what? Difficult. No, it's not. And the only thing is you just have to you have to use your brain to figure this kind of stuff out. That's really all there is to it. Once you know the program a little bit and you start saying to yourself, what little things can I do to make my my creation look real, then you'll start doing these things and what will happen is you'll end up with really sophisticated presentations because that's what this more or less is, just a presentation. And um, you'll get better work as a result of that. So let me zip down to this, and I'm going to do it with the other ones, and then I think I'll have that pretty much done. And then I'll show you the trick about putting the color in. So you'll see me do this again. I'm going to click on this with the direct selection tool. Click on this guy right here. Okay, and I'm going to – actually, you know what? Let me see something here. This, there might even be an easier way to do this at this point. Let me come over. Can this. you not make that go behind it? Yeah, I'm, I was about to do that. Let's go fit all in window. Okay, and let me come over here. The, an easier way to do this for this side would be to uh, click on this guy and go edit cut and then click on this and go edit paste and back. You see, and now that one goes right. Look, see, I didn't actually, actually have to do anything to that one. See how that one works? Mm. So, yeah, that was a very good idea. View, zoom out. Okay, so you see how I did that? I actually saved myself a little bit of labor by doing that. And I guess it was Stephanie. Were you the one that suggested that? Yes. Good. So you're thinking, right? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, that's exactly right. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with this guy over here. Again, we're going to go to the group, or the direct selection tool. Now, uh, who knows the difference between a regular selection tool, the, the direct selection tool? Who can tell me what the real difference between the two is? Any one of you? Um, I think the uh, direct selection tool works directly with the path. It actually works with the anchor points on the path or the line segments of the path. So in other words, if I click on that line segment, I can actually move that line segment. See how I move in that line segment? Did you see how I did that? I moved oh. the entire line segment or I can just move the, the anchor points individually. So that's what the, the direct selection tool does. And, and notice that when I click this object, notice how the anchor points are open. They're little clear ones. Now watch when I come over here and deselect this. This is your regular selection tool. Watch what it looks like. You see how they look different? You can't edit them. You edit them with that tool right there. So that's what this tool is for, for editing that okay 
Okay, that, that makes it easier. Yeah, so it, there's, there are just slightly different tools. Now, since this is so small, I'm just going to I'm just going to fake this by overlapping it a little tiny bit like that. And I think that at the scale that we're working with, I don't think anybody will catch that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to go up and I'm going to do the same thing to the other end of this. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start off by clicking this guy. This guy actually is pretty much where I want him to be right there. So I might just leave that one alone and consider myself lucky. This guy over here, I'm going to click on, and oh, by the way, see what tool I'm using? Mm -hmm. Which tool is that? The direct oh. one? No, that's the, the that, that's the regular one. And you see how the, they look? It won't work. So I got to get that tool, and now I can click on this guy, and I can take this guy, and I can carefully drag this guy up to here. Actually, what I think I want to do is I want to drag that to here. See if I can drag it to there. And I may end up having to drag this thing down just a touch. And then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to zoom over a little bit and see if I can fix that line. Let's see if I can use zoom out. See if I can fix that line a little bit because it did get a little thin. And I think I can probably thicken it up some to make it look better again. And let me see if I can move this up. Oh, boy, this thing is real jumpy. All right, where are we at? Oh. All right, let's zoom in again. There we go. All right, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my hand on this thing, and let's pull this out just a bit. Oh, this is, the, I have to go the other way. That's what it is. Let's see if that works. What do you think? Is that, is that okay with you girls? Does that look good enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's wrapping around there. Okay, so what do you think? Do you guys, now, Samantha, the question is, after you saw me do this, does that make sense to you, and is that, what, is that the effect you're looking for? Yeah, I can Here. do that now. You can do that, right? Not hard at all, right? Right. Okay, so there you go. Now, the last thing that you might want to consider doing here is you might want to come in here. Let me bring this up a little bit. And you might want to put a shadow over this. The problem with putting the shadow over this thing this thing is really, hold on, let me zoom down. Wait. Ah, oh, hold on. This thing is really uh, struggling with me tonight here. Come in. There we go. Okay. So what I need to do here is I need to just select this object right here. Since this is a group, the whole thing gets selected. So what I want to do is I want to go up into Effect. And I want to come down to Stylize. And I want to drop Shadow. So now I got my drop shadow over here. Now let me show you a pretty cool trick. Let me hit cancel. Does everybody see that this is selected, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go to the view menu and I'm gonna hide edges. Okay, now this is still selected. But what I did was I hid the edges so that you don't see those selected edges. I'm just looking at this object without the selected selected edges. Does that make sense to you? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that, people? I, here, I'll, I'll go view show edges. That's what I'm talking about. See the highlighting there? Oh, yeah. By going view hide edges, I'm hiding that highlighting so I can actually see this while it's selected. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to go to effect. I'm going to come to stylize, and I'm going to go to drop shadow, and I'm going to hit preview. And I get that drop shadow right there, which is way too much for me. So what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to start off by knocking the blur down. I'm going to I actually bring it down to one, maybe. Let's bring it down to one. I, I, I really think I want uh, zero, one. Let's try that. Uh, that's probably too much. Let me try this. Let me try doing this in, um, let's try this in, you know what? Cancel. Hold on. Let me just see something here. Go file, document, setup. Let's see what we got here. Inches, units. There we go. Uh, I want pixels. Let's try that. Hit okay. Let me try it again. See if I get pixels now. Here we go. Go to effect. Let me make sure it's selected. Effect. Uh, stylized drop shadow. 
There we go. Set. That's what I want, pixels. You know why I want pixels? It's easier. <laughs> this is an easier way to go. So here's what I want to start doing. I want to start by applying it. Okay, now I'm going to start with the blur. I'm going to start bringing down each of these. I'm going to be knocking a pixel off. So I'm going to go to four. Watch what happens. Three, two, one. There. And now I'm going to go the the um, the Y offset. I'm going to go seven, six, five, four, and maybe three. Okay, so that's probably pretty good. And now the X offset, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to knock it over to about three. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the opacity and I'm going to drop the opacity level down. Let's drop it down to try 25. And I'll come down to here. There. Okay, so you see how I end up getting that very fine uh, drop shadow there? Yes. Okay, hit OK. And then I'm going to go view, fit all in window, and there you have the label with a little bit of a shadow on it so that you get the feeling that it is sit, really sitting around the neck of that bottle. So there you go, Samantha. That's essentially how we do this. So what do you Thank think? You. Can you handle that? Yeah, I can handle that. Thank Good. you. All right. So um, now the next thing that I want to do very quickly is, uh, let's see what we've got over here. Um, the wine bottle. Okay, so uh, you know, you guys already saw how I made this wine bottle, correct? You don't need mm -hmm. me to do it again, right? Right. Okay, you're all good with that? So here's what I want to do. I want to incorporate, uh, you know what, let me just show you this. This is my, this is my package. Mm -hmm. and this is my wine bottle, and this is my uh, 3D rendering of the package. Okay, so what I want to do tonight is I want to show you how I did this. Uh, I may not make the entire package. What I may end up doing is just making one of the panels and one of these, and then I might make the 3D bottle. But actually, I have close to an hour, so I might do more. Okay, um, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to demonstrate how I created this so that you guys can do something very similar. All right? Okay. So, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back to my die line wine box and I'm going to go file save as and I'm going to save this as uh, die line wine box. Hold on. Die line wine box underscore underscore bill. And hit OK or hit save. And hit OK. All right. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and let's see, which one do I want? Do I want this guy here or let's go to this one? Kind of like this one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy right here. Uh, let me just check my layers. I want to see if this is any of it's locked. Let's go to the layers. All right, layers are locked. Let me drop the, the drop shadow. has got to be locked. But I think that, that's the trace. That should be locked. Line art, there it is. And then there's my stuff on the bottom okay so those are the two layers that I want so this is my bottle this is the bottle that I'm going to be using I'm gonna go edit copy okay and I'm gonna come over to my die line wine box and I'm gonna go edit paste and sometime tonight it'll paste in there we go there's my bottle and as you can see the bottle is more or less size to fit. I probably could make it just a little bit bigger and I will do that. I'll simply, you know, just hold down the shift key on this thing or you know what's even safer? Let's try just enlarging it to 110. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. And hit uh, OK. There. All right. And you know what? That's good enough for our purposes. Okay. Now the problem I have is when I did that, you see what happened to my my label, my label got all thrown off here, so I'm going to have to try to fix it. You know what? Let's go to uh, appearance, and let's see here. This guy, get the direct selection tool, or the group selection tool. There we go. Click on this, and preview, and let's go to map art. I have to fix this because my surface got messed up. See where it's gotten messed up there? Let's see if I can yes. fix it. 
Let's see if I can fix it. Like it disappeared. Well, it didn't totally disappear, but it got moved, and it, and it looks like crap. So I got to get it back to where it belongs. Uh, and you know what? For some reason, this thing got thrown onto the wrong surface anyway. Well, let's get that out of there. There's none. Let's get it on the right surface in the first place. That would be, I think this might be the surface, or it might be the back. Let's see in a minute. We'll find out. Uh, label. Let's see. There it is. Is that the back surface? Yep, I guess that is. Let's hit none. Let's go and find the front. Hold on. There's the front. I think that's the front. And uh, label. And come on, there it is. Okay, good. So now I'll bring it, I'm going to bring it over onto the front, and I got to start scaling this guy because it's way too big. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to start bringing this down to a very small size. There. And now I'm going to bring it down to where I want it approximately. Okay, and it's not quite right yet. Let's bring it up a little bit. Yeah, and I don't know why it gets distorted like this, but let's see if I can get the thing looking a little bit better. I think that's probably a little bit better. I think I'll go with that. Again, I'm not going to try to be perfect with this because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing this. You get the general idea, though. You're just generally going to put your logo in place. That don't look too bad. It'll do for our purposes. And i got to get it sort of situated right. The one thing I don't like about this is you can't do the arrow keys to move this. you got to kind of jiggle it around by hand. Okay, I think that'll be good enough. Hit okay. And hit okay. Okay, so now that's fixed. All right, and that, like I say, that's close enough for our purposes. All right, so um, what I want to do, though, is I want to end up mapping this thing uh, onto my box. So I can't really map a 3D object on this. So what I have to do is go to the object menu and come in here and go um, expand appearance. And now this thing has become an expanded version of that bottle. It's basically a, an expanded graphic. And I believe, actually control Z, I, I got to group this. I got to group it all together. Make sure that this is all grouped together. Okay, object group. There we go. Now I should be able to put that, I should be able to put that as a symbol. All right, so there's my, there's my bottle. I, I'm going to have my bottle appear on my, um, on my label. And I think what I'm going to do is tonight, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a, a gradient. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, now this is going to be used uh, as a panel that I'm going to put on, on a 3D box. So what I'm going to actually do with this is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make this thing just to size, which is correct size, which is just like that. Okay? And what I think I'll do with this is I'll put a gradient on it. And uh, there's the gradient. And no stroke. Yep. And I think what I want to do is I want to select the fill. And I want the gradient to be... Uh, go to the window gradient and what I want the gradient to do is I want it to go from I think top to bottom so that would be 90 dark to light there we go that's what I'm looking for and what I want to do with this is let's go edit cut and let's select this bottle edit paste and back okay and we've got that so far but I think what I'm looking for is instead of it going from black to white down here, I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is I will uh, see if I can sample. Actually, i got the color right here. Let me go to Window, and let me go to my um, swatches. Oh, and uh, I don't know. Did I tell you about the swatches yet, guys? Have, you, have I talked to you about the swatches? In the first weeks, did we talk about getting rid of these colors? And yes, yeah. you did. Okay. Yes, you did. okay, all right. Because, again, when you, whenever you work on this, whenever I work on a new project, I always do this. I always come in, and I always remove all these colors because these colors are the colors that come with any document that you open up, you know. So, ultimately, I, I want to get rid of them. So, I come up here to this drop-down menu, and I go select all unused, hit the garbage can, Delete them, yes. 
And there's a couple that don't go away. I click on this. Actually, yeah, I could delete that because I'm not using it. That green I am using. Click on that. Delete that. Uh, yes, this screen I'm actually using in the top up there, so I don't really want to throw this away. Notice this red over here. This red, I believe, is the red that goes into this guy right here. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag that and drop it in. Actually, I can't. So what I'll do is I'll come over here, and I'll make a little shape, and then I'll click that color for the shape. And then I'll come in here, and I'll go new swatch, and that'll be my red swatch. Hit OK. And now I get the red in there. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So now I have the red and I have that green. Let's go back to my gradient. Let's go back to my gradient. And I think what I'm going to try to do is I think I'm going to try to leave the top black. But I think what I'm going to do on the white down here is click on the white. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the white with this red. And let's see what that looks like. There. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think? You like that? Yep. Yeah, I like that. But does it hide your shadow at the bottom? There's or no shadow. There's no shadow on it. And what's going to happen is I'm going to put text down there. Uh, okay. I could conceivably go back in and I could put the shadow back into the thing uh, if I want to do that. Uh, okay. I could put the shadow in there if I want. So uh, I, let me go back to my die line wine, or actually go to my, hold on, go to my box here. So I have, I'm going to make a couple of notes so I can write down what I got here. So it's a 2008. Oh, the pen don't work. Great. 2008. And then that is 750ML. And then down at the bottom, un, un, okay. Okay. All right. So now let's go back to my die line wine box bill. And um, I could do this. I could probably move this up. More like that. Like that. And, and as you say, I could go back in and I could get my, I could get my, um, my shadow and put the shadow back in there. So now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here using similar type than this. I'm going to set just the words 2008 and 750 milliliter. So I get my type tool, come over here, click, just place my cursor, and type um, 2008. And then I'm going to do it again next to it. And I'm going to type in 750ML. And... Then I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to type in 2008. There. All right. And now I'm going to see if I can bring these things up in size a little bit real quickly. Get these things to be a little bit bigger, and let's see what we got. Uh, what type are we working with here? What type do we have on here? Let me see what type that is. Uh, that is, I think, probably, uh, it's not even showing me character. Period Pro. So what I'm looking for here is, uh, I can't remember the name of this font, but I'll know it when I see it. Give me one second. It is, uh, right, I can't, I can never remember the name of this font. It's not one that I use very much. That's probably why I passed it probably. Let's see, it's um, uh, copper plate. There it is, copper plate. That's what we want, copper plate. Okay, this, same thing. Copper plate, gothic bold. This is going to be the same thing. I might be able to do that with this tool here. Yep, great, that's what I want. Click on this, bring it up, click on the eyedropper tool, click on the type, and there you go. Now I have my, I have my basic text for my package. So what I'm gonna do with this is, I'm just gonna bring it down to here, place it at the bottom, and I might make it a little bit bigger. All right? And then take this guy up here and place this over to the left. 
place this over to the right. And these probably are too big. What I'm going to do is zoom in on it a little bit. And let me select both of them. I'm going to make them white. All right. And then I'm going to use my Align panel to align them. And they're aligned. They probably are a little bit big, so I'll probably come up here and maybe come down 23, 22. Let's bring them down to 18. That's probably pretty good. And let's move that and that up a little bit. Okay. And this one over a little bit. I also, I think I want to put a little space between this. That's probably good. And let's now move that over a little bit. Okay. Now again, you know, not I'm not making a big deal out of this label. You, I'm out of this package. You can do uh, a much more, much more elaborate package if you want. And down at the bottom here, what I want to do with this is I want to make that white. There. So now I have my, and this maybe what we could do is bring this down now. this down even more kind of like that with it overlapping slightly yeah I kind of like that actually all right now what I'm going to do is this guy here and this guy here oh, not that that I'm going to go object group and then this guy is already grouped and then this guy hold that that and that and then using the align panel I'm going to align all of it okay and now I have all of those elements aligned on my label, okay? That's basically how I built the entire package. So, I mean, you could conceivably just put, come in here. Let me show you another trick. If you come in here and you select this guy, and then if you come in and you apply that gradient to it, you could come in and you could apply the gradient to the whole thing. See that? But I don't like that look. I don't think that look work that look works as well. Uh, so I did mine as individual panels like this. Another thing that you could do, let's go edit undo. Edit undo gradient. There. Another thing that you could have done if you wanted to is I'm gonna take this guy here for a second and group it. Let me, let me group this whole thing. And you know what? Now that I got this done, let me go over to my symbols and let me clear out my symbols. I'm gonna. This is my symbol panel. If you remember me, uh, the last time we had, uh, we were putting together boxes and stuff. Remember, I told you that we have to actually create our labels and they have to be uh, in a um, in a symbol form. So I'm gonna clean out these symbols. These are symbols that I don't really want select all and use and delete them yes and then I'm gonna see if I can drag this and make a symbol yeah I can so now I'm gonna call this one front okay and I'm gonna change it from a movie clip to a graphic and hit OK and there you see it did go in so there it is I actually have my front label that's the label that I'm going to use on the front okay any questions about any of that you guys good? You guys okay with this? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create the top. And all I'm going to do for the top is this. I'm going to come up and I'm going to make myself a top. I'll probably make it a little bit bigger because I, I, as I told you, I like to have the, the color go a little bit beyond. Actually, I can't with this. You know why? Because it's going to be used. This is going to be used as a top, so I really can't do that. Let me make it exactly the right size. This is going to be a symbol. I'm going to end up using this as a symbol, so I really want it to be the correct size. So there's my there's my top. And the only thing I can tell you is I think what I want to do is I want to reverse this. So I'm going to go to my – the reason I want to reverse it is because you see how it's black here and the red there, it would be illogical. See, see what I'm talking about? It's black yeah. here. That black should be there, and it should go to red that way. So let me come in, and let me go to my gradient. I think the gradient might be shut, but a window – and gradient and let us reverse this thing let us take this guy here 
and uh, so like that. Bring this like this. There we go. And I think probably I want to go a little bit this way, or better yet, let's go to the middle again and let's make this just go a little further like that. Let's get out a bit. That'll work. Okay, so now I have a top. Now what I want to do with this is I just want to put the Rosa Seca on the top. So I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to pick up my I'm going to pick up my label right there. Go edit copy. And then I'm going to come back to my box and edit paste. There it is. And it's already a symbol. Let's see if it went into the symbols panel already. I think it's already in the symbols panel because it is a symbol. Let's go window, symbols. Yeah, where did it go? Where'd my symbols go? I don't know why I'm not seeing them. There we are. Yeah, see, it's already in there. So what I want to do with the symbol is I want to re reverse it, I think. I want to make it, it's going to go up here, but I want it to be reversed. I want to re turn it around. So I'm going to just rotate it like this and hold down the shift key. And now I'm going to scale it, hold down the shift and alt key and scale it until it fits on my top. And I'll probably make it a little bit bigger. How's that? That's probably too big. Like that, maybe. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit and over a little bit. Okay, so now I have, now I have my, my top and I have my one side. The second side, what I probably will do with my second side is the same thing, but what I might do is I'm going to take this. Let me, uh, why am I not seeing this object? There we go. Why is that thing doing that? There we go. Okay, so I want this. I'm going to hold down the uh, Alt key, and I'm going to duplicate this, bring this over to here. And I'm going to make a simple side. Yeah, I'm going to make a simple side. I'm just going to take this off for now. This would Maybe I'll leave the bottle. Maybe I'll just leave the bottle. I'm going to take this off. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Duplicate symbol. There we go. There we go. All right. And now what I want to do is after I duplicate the symbol, I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to remove this. And that will be my duplicate symbol. And I'm going to call this symbol. See if I can rename it. Uh, where are we at here? Symbol options? Yeah, this is going to be side. And hit OK. Now let's see. There we go. All right, now we're going to go back. I'm going to delete this guy here. And let's drag this one out and see if that looks right now. Yeah, OK, so. The only thing I would tell you is that in doing this, in reality, what I would do is I'd probably remove the label or I'd move the label over to here, but I'm not going to go to all that trouble. So in other words, my bottle is going to have the bottle showing uh, front side, back, and other side. Does that make sense to you, what I'm trying to say here? That's what my box is. Okay, so that's, that's what you expect us to do, to just show all four sides? No. Well, yeah, in the, in, when, you're creating, when you're creating this mock-up, yes, you're going to, look, let's go back to my, let's go back to my piece. You see, you see how my box looks? That's what, okay. That's, okay. What, that's what you want this to look like. You want to see the bottom. You want to see the top. These here are just basically fold-in flaps. So you can make them, but you don't have to, you know, uh, put anything on them. These fold in. This is a die. I mean, this is a fold thing. Uh, this is what they use to glue this together, so you don't have to put anything on there. This right. is the bottom. I I chose to put on the bottom 
the barcode. And on the top, I just chose to decorate it with the um, with the indicia, the logo. So you see what I'm trying to say is there's the front, there's there's the back. This is what the sides look like, the bottles without the labeling on it. I didn't go to all that trouble here, okay? But you get the general idea. So I did, and I didn't make the entire box. I kind of made half of the box because what I want to do is I want to show you how to do how to come in and do the. Um, I want I want to give you an idea how to come in and do the the 3D rendering. Okay. 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 So this is it. I got my two my three symbols in here: the top and the front and the side. See that? Any okay. questions about any of this before I go any further? No, I'm fine with it. You're good. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to open up my artboards and I'm going to create a new artboard. And I'm going to call this artboard my um, uh, 3D model. Okay, 3D model. So there's my 3D model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by getting a shape. And I'm going to just kind of come over here and I'm going to just drag this, this shape over here. And I'm going to copy one of these panel shapes just like that yeah and then I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm going to give it a very light gray color neutral like that okay so there is my basic shape now just so that you understand I'm basically using the same size and shape as one of these panels because I came in here and I made these um, these symbols which I want to put on the panel. And I want the symbols to fit the panel well. So if I actually use the same size to make the model, these should fit beautifully. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. All right. Now, to make the 3D model, you know how to do this, right? You click on the thing. You select it. One of the important things for you to keep in mind is when you do this, you just want it to be a basic shape and you want it to be a simple color. You also want to open up the appearance panel because when you do this, let me close this, when you do this, when you make this model, the appearance panel is, and I'm going to get rid of that stroke because we don't need the stroke. Let's see if I can throw that away. It won't throw away. Nope. Okay. Can't get rid of it. When I, when I make my 3D model, I can access it and I can bring it back in here. So I'm going to go to Effect, 3D, and this is not the Revolve. This is the Extrude and Bevel. And I'm just going to hit Preview so we can see what we get. What happened? Why is it not previewing? What's going on with this thing? Let's try it again. Effect, 3D, extrude and bevel. Let's try it again. And preview. Wow. Why is it not doing this? What's Could it be? You might have something locked in your layers? No. No, the object is selected. There it is. See, look, let me hit cancel again. Okay. There's, there's the object. There's the object right there, and it's just a shape, and it's selected. So it's good. Go to effect, 3D, extrude and bevel, off axis front. Let's try, let's try uh, hmm, isometric left preview. And it's not rendering it. Isn't that odd? I don't know why this isn't rendering it tonight. That's really strange. It just is not rendering it. Figures. That this is going to happen to me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's you know, it's, it never does this. It just doesn't do this. It's just simply not rendering it at all. I don't know why. Not showing me it. There's no reason for it to do this either. Oh, man. It's not doing it. Preview off on. Yeah, it's not doing it. Wow. I don't know what the problem is. You saw me in the week two render the yeah. model, right? Yeah. You did it in week two? Yeah. I don't know why this is suddenly not allowing me to do it. This is really very annoying. It's really 
going to put a crimp, in, crimp into my entire night because now I can't really finish my demonstration. I don't know what to make of this. Map art. I can't even do that. Artwork produced no surfaces for mapping art. It canceled. What is the problem with this? This is a... That's the, that's the proper object. Extrude and bevel. You know what? Let me do this real quick. Let me come in here and let me quickly try something. Um, I know this isn't the right way to do this, but I'm just going to take a shot at it anyway. Okay, and this is not right. I know it isn't, but what the heck. Okay, let's try this. Back to 3D. See, now that renders it. Why? I have no idea. I have no idea why that's doing that, why that's rendering it. Isn't that spooky? Stop. Stop. Delete it. So this object is just not rendering. So let me try making another one. Well, I shouldn't have to do this. I wonder if this is why. You know what? I wonder if that's what it is. All right, let me try this with this shape. Okay, and let me see if I can square the corners off. There we go. All right, let's try this. Maybe that's why there's a problem. I'm trying to think of why this would be giving me a problem because it shouldn't be. I don't quite know. No, you see, I still get these things. Shoot. Effect 3D student bevel preview. It's not letting me. Look at that. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. Okay, cancel. All right, you know what? I'm going to try one more thing. Do you have to select it? It is selected. No, it was selected. I'm going to try one more thing. I have one more idea here. I'm going to start off by, yeah, there's my fill. Let me just change that to a stroke for a second. Okay, let me just try one more thing. I'm going to click and put a point here. I'm going way out on a limb on this because it just doesn't seem like I should have to be doing this, but I'm trying to troubleshoot and figure out why this thing is giving me this trouble. Click there and click there. And now I got myself a shape. Great. Okay. Now, let's see what we got. Is that a closed shape? Did it close? Yeah, I think it did. All right, let's try it. I don't know whether it did or not. Let me just check. Uh, it didn't. Edit. Undo pen. All right. And let me come up here with the pen. Hold down the shift key. All right, hold on. I got to make sure I reconnect here. Hold down the shift key. Close it. Okay, now I got it. All right, let me just see now if this will work. Let's see if this works now. Okay. I can't say it's going to. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. To find out. Now, why is it not selecting? There it is. Okay. Okay, so it's got a stroke. We put a fill on it. There we go. All right, now let's try this. Go effect, 3D, extrude and bevel, preview. No, it's not. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely befuddled. I, I don't have any idea why this is not rendering a 3D shape for me. So I'm stuck, guys. I can't really show you this. Let me. The best that I can do at this point because this is not working and I have no clue as to why it's not working is that what I'm essentially going to do with this or try to do it, I can't do it right now, obviously, is let me go to my die line wine box bill back here. Nah, cancel. Go over to this. Okay. And what I would essentially be doing is creating this. This is exactly how I created this guy. All right. Uh, I basically rendered out my box in 3D. I had, if you come in here, let me click on this. 
Yeah, I think it's expanded. But let me go to the uh, symbols. And you see, there's my bottle in there. I guess I don't really have these symbols in here anymore. But anyway, um, I have this guy on uh, one symbol on one surface, this guy on another symbol that was put onto this surface. And then up on the top, I have this is my third symbol. And it was this guy right here, this guy right here, and this guy right there. And that's how I rendered that box. And then to make that drop shadow, do you guys know how I did that? Do you guys uh, want to see how I did that? Do you know how, how to do that? No, how did you do it? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go back to my wine bottle. Is it how you did it when yeah. you did the, uh, the tag? It's a bottle. What? Was it how... Was it how you uh, you did the drop shadow the same way when you did the tag? No. No, no, no. That's different. What I did with this, I'll show you what I did with this. Uh, let me unlock my layers. This is a little bit of a trickier uh, way to go, but it, it really creates a cool effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hide the drop shadow layer, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call it new drop shadow. Okay, new drop is good enough. And I'm going to drag that layer right beneath that line art layer. Okay? And I am going to bring my layers panel over here, close this up, and bring the symbol into we're done with it. And by the way, just so that you know, I'm, I'm terribly sorry about the 3D model. I don't really know why I couldn't render it. It's actually very frustrating. So what I'm going to do is, uh, once again, I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go object expand appearance and I'm going to go edit copy edit paste in back so what I did was I copied this and I pasted it in back okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reflect it yeah and I'm going to preview it it's going to reflect along the horizontal axis you see it it, it upside down it Oh, that's cool. And I'm going to hit OK. And, oh, it gets cooler. And then I'm going to just bring it down. I'm going to start bringing it down. Now, here's the thing I want you to understand. Critical for you to know this. You cannot, you cannot um, just take a 3D model and do this inversion. You can't do it. Because what it does is it confuses the heck out of the 3D model. And it makes it do something that... You know, it just looks absolutely nuts. So when you're ready to do this shadow effect, you really have to go in and, and rasterize this, turn it into uh, graphic shapes. You guys understand that? That's too far. I'm going to bring it up until it's just hitting off the bottom of this, like about like that. That's probably pretty good. Okay? So there you go. I've got my uh, basis for my shadow. And there's my bottle. So I'm going to come in here now, look at my layers again. Where's my layers? Did I shut them? No, my layers are right here. My new drop shadow layer, let's see, that's on my, that's on my line art layer. So let me move that down to my new drop shadow layer. I'm going to lock the line art layer. And then I got this layer up here, which is that shadow, I think. I don't know what that. Oh, it is that thing in front. That's what it is. Okay. All right. That's good. So the new drop shadow layer, watch when I see it. So that's where it is. It's on that layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow this down a little bit. I'm going to come in here, making sure that I'm on the new drop shadow layer. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to get a regular old rectangle and I'm going to come up and I'm going to drag myself a rectangle to about like that. Okay. And I'm going to come in, I'm going to throw a gradient on it. And I don't want the gradient on the stroke. I want it to be on the fill. Okay? And I'm going to come over here with the gradient tool. And I'm going to make the gradient go 90, I believe. Yep, that's what I want. I'm pretty sure. And now I'm going to select both of these guys. And I'm going to go to the window menu. And I'm going to open up um, transparency. Move the transparency over here and make opacity mask. Look at that. Okay. Now it's actually, I got to invert the mask. 
there we go. See how when I invert the mask, the, um, the white area is what's actually blocking the color, and the black area is what's actually showing the color? You see it? Okay. Okay, now I deselect it, you get an idea what it looks like. It's not quite right yet, but we'll work on it. But that's basically what you're going to do. Now what you're going to do is you're going to keep it selected. You have here your artwork, which is being masked, and you have the actual mask itself over here. So if I click on this mask, notice that I can now come in and I can play around with the gradient. Now, I notice that the white area is what's making this vanish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to move this slider and you see how it's making it disappear? Yes. And I keep moving it until I reach a point where I like the shadow, which would be really a very small shadow, sort of like that. You know, this is understated. I could maybe go a little bit deeper with it. You know, I could probably come up a little bit more. Let's see. Maybe I'll just bring this back a little bit. That's not too bad. That's probably a little bit more than I want it to be. I don't want it to be a big shadow. I want it to be something like that. There you go. Basically, that's the drop shadow. Okay? Okay. And there's, a, there's a, an area right at the bottom here. You'll see that there's this um, dark. Let me show you. There's this dark color right over here. Right there. That thing. Let's go object block selection. And oh, I, I know what it is. It's on a locked layer now. Let's go to layers. I got to first of all. I got to come back to my layers. When you uh, this is another thing that's very important for you to understand. When you are um, watch the layers. When I click on this guy, and when I go into my mask layer, I think that's my drop shadow layer. Wow. Oh, you know why? Because it's a I, I, wrong tool. Click on this. Here we go. Now watch this. Look at all those layers. When I come over here and when I click on the mask, you see what happens to my layers panel? It, it only shows the opacity mask layer. That's the only thing it shows. So it can be very confusing when you first see this because you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, where did my layers go? What happened? Right, that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, the reason that's happening is because you've got the mask selected, and there's only one thing in that layer. There's only one layer, and that's that mask layer. But when you come back and click on this bottle, which is the piece of art that's being masked, watch what happens to the layers panel. All your layers come back. See what I mean? Okay. So you just got to keep in mind that when you got this selected, if you're clicking to edit the mask, which you can do, you saw me do it with the gradient, Right? You can right. come in here and you can, you'll see that you have on your layers only one layer, which is the mask layer. Once you're done editing this, you've got to click off of this, click back onto this, and now your new layers, your, all your layers come back. What I was trying to do is I was trying to get this guy here. Let's see if I can get this now. I want it this guy. Yeah, it's, it's grouped in there. So let's see if I can grab this this way. Um, it's all broken out. All right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create another. What I wanted to do is I wanted to create another form of a shadow down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get the ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw myself out an ellipse sort of like this. Okay, and I want that ellipse to be black with no white. Okay, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to go edit cut. And then I'm going to select this guy here. That's so I can lock my, hold on, let me lock my new drop shadow layer. Let me select all of this. That's what we want. Edit. Paste him back. There. Okay. Oh, it didn't paste it in back. I'll be darned. Let's try it again. Let's, you know what? Let's bring it down to here. That's not pasting it back. Let's try it again. Edit. Cut. You know, let's try it one more time. Come on. Edit, paste him back. Wait a minute. Okay, now 
edit paste them back. Let's try it now. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I got that pasted in back. And what I want to do with this thing is I don't want it to be very big. But what I'm going to do with this thing is I'm going to come up into my effects panel and I'm going to come down to blur and I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. Now, uh, there are all kinds of effects in here. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a different sort of a shadow. This is the kind of shadow that you would have a direct shadow cast uh, from something sitting against uh, a surface. So I'm going to choose Gaussian Blur and watch what happens to this oval shape. I'm going to hit Preview. And it, you see how it blurs out? And I can come in here and I can control how much this blurs out until I get something that I like, probably something like that. And then I hit OK. And if I want, I can go to my Layers panel, or I actually, I'm sorry, go to my Transparency my Opacity, and I can set this from Normal to Multiply. Uh, normally, whenever you create any kind of a shadow thing like this, you generally want to use the transparency and you want to change it if it's a if it's something that's a transparent, like a shadow type of effect, you want to multiply it. And then you want to position it. I'll move it down just a bit. Get it moved down just a little bit. That's probably too much. Let's come back up. I'll know when I see it. Probably like about there. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, come over here and I'm going to try dragging this down a bit. Maybe a little bit up more. I like it to be kind of dark, actually. That's probably good. Okay, and now if you go view, fit, artboard, and window, you have this kind of effect right there. See that? Yes. So the other thing I notice is this seems a little bit big. So I'm going to come over to the new drop shadow layer, select this whole thing, and I'm going to use the, the scale tool. And I'm going to, uh, i got to get the side of this. I'm going to tr drag this down until I get the sides. Click on this, and I'm going to hold the Shift key and the Alt key because I want to scale it both sides in. And I'm just going to bring this in, oh, I don't know, maybe to about right there. Yeah, there we go. See, that looks better. You see that? Yes, I do. And now if I go View the artboard and window, we have our bottle, and we have a nice drop shadow on it, and uh, we've actually created a, a, a hot spot underneath it, a dark spot underneath it. So uh, that's it. I'm kind of stuck. I'm very sorry I wasn't able to, to work through the process of, um, of showing you the, uh, 3D uh, the 3D box. I don't know why that thing was giving me that kind of trouble. I wonder if I try it in here. Let me just try one more thing while I'm at it. And then I'll ask you guys if you have any questions or anything you want to talk to me about real quick. Let's try this one more time. Let's go Effect 3D Extrude and Bevel Preview. Now, see, look at that. Damn it. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to build this in here because I got the time to do it. So let me take these. So, I okay, first of all, any questions about this before I go into this? Any questions at all about this? Anything at all? Anything you want to know? I'm, I'm, I, I think I may have it, but if I have any questions, I will definitely email you. Email me, or better yet, I told you in um, announcements, my uh, schedule and Blackboard is there. You can feel free to come in uh, and ask me or show me whatever, okay? So let me just, let me move these out of the way. See, I seem to be a winner in here. So let's unlock everything. Where are we at here? Uh, like that. Let's go to my layers right here. Yeah, so everything's unlocked. Let me just drag these out of the way. All right. And let's see if I can get, let's see if I can get my box here. And I don't know whether this is going to foul up or not. Let's go edit copy. And let's go into my, which one was it? Was this one? Yeah. Let's go edit paste in place. Okay, let's see what happens. You fit artboard and window. Okay, and it looks to me like this is bigger. Okay, so let's uh 
Let's go zoom out. Zoom out. Where are you? Zoom out. There we go. And, and let's scroll it up a little bit. Right, I'm going to make that artboard a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay, that'll do it. Now, I don't know whether this is going to work with this box or not. We had trouble with it. Let's see what happens. Let's do it in bevel. Preview. There we go. Look at that. Now, you see what I mean? There's no rhyme or reason to this. Why this happened, no idea. Anyway, we're in, we're in business. So, okay, so I'm not going to belabor this whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to get this thing into a shape of a, of a square. I'm pretty close to this. Let's try 275. What do you think? Does that look square to you? Uh -huh. Let's try yes. Let's try 85. Let's try 285. 285. Okay. That's fine. Good. I think that's a good start. Okay, so now we have our box. Let me delete this. So now what I want to do is I want to go back into my my die line and I want to come up to my symbols and I want to drag that symbol out and go edit copy and then go back to my wine bottle and go edit paste. Now, do you see what happened? I'm going to delete that. You see what happened when I pasted it in since it was a symbol? You see what it did? It put it into my symbols panel. So in other words, this is what you have to understand. Whenever you create a symbol, you can copy that symbol and bring it into any other file that you're working on. So right now I'm working on this box in here. I can bring it into that box. Uh, I can bring that symbol from one, uh, one artboard or one file and put it in here, and I have that symbol. So let's go back here and let's get the second one. The second one is this guy here. Let's drag it out, edit copy, and come back to my wine bottle, edit paste, and there it is. It's in there. Hit delete. And I think I want to do the same thing with the top. Let's go and get the top. Let's drag the top out, edit copy, and come over here, edit paste, and there's the top. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, well, we'll deal with that. That's not the top, though, is it? Something's not right. Let me check this for a minute here. Did I get everything for that? I don't think I did. There we go. That's what I want. New symbol call this top two. And we're going to call that top two with a graphic and hit OK. I wanted that color. I don't know whether I got that. What did I get here? Oh, you know what? I got more than I wanted, I think. It's, let's go back. I think I actually grabbed more than I wanted. I wasn't very careful with this. Yeah, see, I got more than I wanted here. Let me see if I can get this wow. right. I'm having some trouble wow. getting this even. Let's see, here yeah. it is. I'll check. Yeah. Now why is this giving me trouble? Is this locked? Where's my layers? Nope, that's not the layers. Where's my layers? Yeah, yeah. okay. Why is this thing? Oh, what's going on with this thing? Why is that thing like that? Object. Nope, it is. Huh. Now I'm having trouble with this thing. Look at that. Object hide selection. Now it's gone. Edit, undo hide. So what is the problem here? Yeah, I don't know. Something's funny with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it again. Let me just quickly make this thing. I'm going to create a new layer. It's very frustrating. Let me lock these layers. All right, and let me try making this thing one more time because this is just insane. And I want to get it right so I can do this. So there's that. Okay, and I'm going to choose this color. There we go. And I didn't get it, did I? I didn't. Control C. Uh, so let's come in here and grab that color. I didn't get it again. Uh, my gradient. 
Okay, and let's make my gradient. And I want my gradient to be, I want it to be black. 90, negative 90 or 90? Negative 90. There we go, negative 90. There we go. All right, and I'm going to probably bring this up a little bit like this. That's probably pretty good. And then this is going to be that red color. So double click on that, and I should have my red in there. Uh, and I don't. Let's find my swatches. Yeah, and let's click and drag and drop the red there. Okay, good. So there we go. I got that now. And then I'm just going to get my label again. Okay. Edit, paste. There we go. And bring this up. And let's rotate it. Rotate it around. Holding the shift key to constrain it. Bring it over here. And let me size it. Just get it to where it's fitting on here. So all these things are sort of basic things. You just bring this up now into position. There, that's pretty good. And move it over like that. And that's good enough. Okay, now I'm going to select this. And I'm going to drag it in to my symbols. Oops, I don't have my symbols showing. Let's find them. There are my symbols. Okay, so I don't want this thing, so delete that. That's, that's junk. Delete instances. And I want this deleted as well. Yeah, okay. And now, oh, what happened? Edit undo. Okay, that's, that's cool. We're all right. Let's create that now. New symbol and the call that top. I think we've got it now. And uh, graphic. And okay. There you go. See it? You can tell it's right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it out. There it is. Edit copy. And then come into my wine bottle and edit paste. It's in there. Hit delete. Now I don't really want these on the, I don't want them on the desktop. I want them on the symbol. So now what I was telling you before, this is good. So you understand there's my, there's my side, there's my front, and there's my top. So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm just going to get this over here out of the way. I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to find my appearance panel. Because remember what I told you when you select your object. See where it says 3D extrude and bevel? This is where you want to go when you're ready to edit your box. Okay? You good with that? Any questions? Yeah. Any yes. questions about what I'm doing? You're all right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that this was. I'm sorry that this was a little crazy, but I was having. I seem to be having a little bit of issues with this. Now, now I'm going to go map art, and I'm going to go to my surfaces. And I think the surface I want is. Let's see here. I think it's. Uh, let me just look at the surfaces real quick. Uh, and the top. There's the top. So let's go to the top first. Click on the top. There's my top, okay? And actually, I think, let's fit, scale to fit. There, perfect. See how I did that? I put the top on, it went in the direction I wanted, and I scaled to fit it. Any questions about that? No, oh, that looks pretty easy. Very easy. Now I'm going to try to find my front, which I think that's the front, I think. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go front, and come on, oh, this is where it gets tricky. See, it renders. I may, I may end up having problems with this because it might be very complex and it may have trouble rendering. See, see this is going to render this. It's going to take a while to render this. But anyway, basically, you're going to make a 3D model. You're going to see if you can get this to render onto these surfaces. Uh, I, may, I may have trouble with this. Because already I'm seeing that this thing is, see how it's struggling? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And why, why, why is it rendering like that? Because the symbol that I'm putting on there is actually a lot of detail. And it's rendering onto that surface a lot of stuff. So, even though it's a symbol, there's an awful lot going on with it, and that could be why it's rendering so slowly. This not this is not the most perfect. Um, this is not the most perfect um, 
3D modeling tool that there is. Now, if this happens, much as I hate to admit it, if this happens, there is another way that you can render this box. So what I'm going to do is just show you, in case, because I don't want you to fail, so I'm going to hit stop. Okay, let me hit stop. Let me get this thing to stop. It's going to take me a minute to stop this. And I'll show you the other way. Oh boy, hold on. Let it, let it, let it, uh, let the program to respond. Give it a second, because it's now it's really upset with me. <laughs> the program's very angry with me right now. Yeah, it's it's showing. Yeah, yeah. So give it a second. Give it a second to do its thing here, and hopefully it'll come around. Uh, in a minute, I got ten minutes. I'll sh I'll try to show you the other way that you can do this, and that is basically you're going to take and instead of using these as, as symbols, you're going to bring them out. You're going to break the link to the symbol, turn the symbol back into a graphic, and you're just going to use your um, uh, this this tool over here, which is your free transform tool. And you have a distort version of the three tra a pre-transform tool. And I don't know whether you remember or not, but I think when I did my milk can, I distorted my side panel. Do you remember me doing that for the milk container? I guess it was. I guess. Hey. It was, well, if you, if this does, if I can't get this, is already at eight fifty. If this thing is going to stay like this, and I got this problem. I might not be able to show you because we're at our class is ending. But if you take a look at week three, I believe, is the week that I had my milk carton. If you take a look, I believe I did that same technique to apply the side of the milk carton. That's the other way that you could do this. this that's not the way I wanted you to do it. But unfortunately, because of the fact that this is behaving like this, and it's probably just because... There's such a, such a labor to do this. I don't know. I guess I'm stuck with it. I can't really. I guess I can try to shut it. Let's see if I can. Hold on. What's this say? Okay. So it crashed. Let me open this up again. Let's see what I get. Let me go back up and see if I get. Give me a second to open this thing. We'll, we'll take one more look at this. And see, okay. what, see what's happening with it before we quit all together. I just was uh, this was a pretty sloppy presentation. I, I apologize for that. I uh, don't know why this program is giving me so much trouble tonight. It usually is very good. I think one of the reasons it's giving me trouble is I think there's some issues with Creative Cloud. I, I don't really like working with this Creative Cloud version nearly as much as I do with CS6. I think the Creative Cloud that we got. I think other people have had problems with it too. You guys have, have you ever had any issues with your creative clouds? Yes, I have. Yeah. I think, I think that has something to do with it. Anyway, let's see. I go file, open this thing. Come on. Come on, baby. Open recent. I want uh, Bill. There we go. That's the one I want, I think. No, it's not. I think I wasn't using Bill, actually. I think what I was using was, um, which one was it? Let's see. Uh, I think it was Wine wine Bottle. I think that's what it was. It was actually Wine Bottle. Nope. Maybe I, maybe, was this the one I was using? Do you remember? Open recent file. Rose label. Rose label tag. Maybe what happened is it didn't get saved. Uh, could be that it didn't get saved. Well, anyway, um, I'm kind of stuck. I just can't. I can't bring it back up. It's not going to come up. Tag. I don't think I'm going to get it. I think. I think actually it didn't get saved because I didn't pull a save on it, and it crashed. And it erased everything that we did. Okay, so um, if you take a look, I'm sorry. If you take a look at week, take a look at week uh, three. I believe it was that was the week last week, right? When we worked on the uh, milk cartons. Yes. Yeah. If you take a look at week three, 
towards the end of my presentation when I actually had the milk carton and I built it. Remember I built, showed you how to build the milk carton using the 3D model and then we built the top separately? Remember yes. that? Okay, at one point I put the front surface on the milk carton, but because I distorted the milk carton, gave it some perspective, the symbol wouldn't go on right. Remember that? Yes, I do. Okay, so what I then did was I took the symbol and I brought it out and broke the link to the symbol, made it just a, a regular old plain graphic. Once I did that, I was then able to position it next to the side of the box and use the 3D perspective, which is sort of like this. Watch when I click on this. Let's see. I guess this might be a locked layer. Let me just see. Um, yeah, it is. Let me just do this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I can come in here, and I can grab this, okay? And you see the pre-distort, perspective distort? What I can do with this is I can take this if I want, and I can... Uh, that's not right. Okay, maybe it's this guy. That's what it is. I can take this, see, and I can do this. Look. Oh, you know what? This is—is is this a symbol? That's a symbol. So let me first go to, let's see, uh, break link to symbol. That's how you do that. Okay, so you see how I broke the link to the symbol, and now it becomes just a graphic. That's a very important thing for you to remember to do. Break the link link to the symbol. Now I can get this perspective tool. And I should be able to distort this. Now oh, it's going to start this nonsense again. Hold on. Let me just get this out of here. Edit. Undo. Rotate. All right. Let's try it one more time. Put this on and free distort. Let's try it now. There we go. There. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. See what I'm saying to you? See how I, I can distort this thing? Okay. There you go. So what I'm saying is, if you, if, you can, if you can use your imagination on this, because I was having such a great deal of difficulty getting my surfaces on the 3D rendered box, if you just render the box in 3D and put your graphic up against the side of it, making sure that it's nothing more than a, um, a graphic and not a symbol, Make sure you group it first. Then you can use your distortion. You can use your, I'll select it again. You can use your, uh, right here, the free distort. And you can pull these things until you get them where you want them. Okay? You know what I mean? You can make these things go wherever you need them to go. And I actually didn't get the whole thing selected. Okay? But you get the general idea. All right? Okay. I guess that's it for tonight. I mean, do you guys have any final questions or thoughts or anything you want to say before we end? No, I, I believe I actually learned a lot tonight. Good. I'm sorry. The presentation was extremely poor. Again, there were unexpected issues that occurred with the program that I just, I don't even know why these, these things were happening. I did render these boxes before. My guess is that probably the nature of that, a bottle. It's a very complex bottle, and I think probably it just struggled with the bottle. Uh, if I had known that that was going to happen, I probably would have went the other way and shown you just how to do it the other way, just because it would have been a cleaner presentation. But I did want to show you how to do it on the box, or on the box, uh, yeah, on the box. I wanted to show you how to do it on the box because you might not be making anywhere near as complex uh, a label is mine. You, you see what I mean? So if yours is a simpler label, I doubt very much you're going to have the trouble that I had. Right? Okay. Right. You're right. Yeah. So try to keep it simple. One thing that you want to keep in mind is if you decide to use pictures of any kind, make sure that you go into the edit menu or the object menu, I'm sorry, and go image trace and trace the image. Do you guys know how to do that? It, can you show us real quick? Um, I can try to show it real quick. I don't know whether I have a picture that I could use. Let me see. If I have a picture I could use here. Uh, what do I got? <clears throat> I don't know. Um, yeah, I could use one of these garbage things. Okay, honesty. Let's use honesty. Put that in there. There we go. All right, so here's, here's how you would do this. You would close this. I'm going to get this out of here. See, select honesty. Let me just show you. Come over here. Select honesty. And you go object live or image trace make. And you get this, which looks pretty crappy, right? 
Right. But then you come over here and you get this uh, image trace menu. And what you're going to do is you're going to change the mode. Since this was a color piece of art, change it to color. And you're going to go all the way up, all the way up to 30. Watch what happens. See how nice it gets? Uh-huh. Right. And you can even improve on that by coming into here and dialing down the noise. There. And you might even be able to dial up the pads a little bit. There. Okay, so you see that looks pretty good, right? For a yeah, month. Right. So, so here's what you need to understand. I'm going to close this. What you need to understand is that this was a bitmap. And what I did was I brought it into Image Trace. I, I selected, brought it into Image Trace, and I had it trace this. Now watch when I come into Image Trace and go expand. Watch what happens to this. It changes from a bitmap. Watch what it does. You see what it did? It turned it into a, a piece of vector art. Hmm. Now, you can use that piece of vector art to make a symbol. You can make a, you can make a symbol. I think you can't make a symbol, actually, out of a, out of a, a bitmap. And if you can, you can't really use it in the 3D model. But if you come in and you turn this thing into a, a vector, just like I did there, that's essentially very quickly how you do it. You now have something that you can use. So if you're using pictures, you might want to, Remember to take the bitmaps and convert them into vectors. And you're going to play around with, remember how I showed you how to do it, object, click on this. You're going to object, and you're going to go um, image trace, and then you're going to open up. It's not going to show me because it's already done. But then you're, you've got that little panel up there. You're going to open, open the panel up and, and bring your settings higher and change it from black and white to color, and you'll end up with something very much like that. And remember now, this is recorded, so ultimately you can go back in and watch this, watch me do this at the very end again, okay? Right, okay. All right, gals, you okay? You got everything good? You're happy? We're all set? Yeah, I'm good. good. I'm glad you guys were able to make it. It was really terrible that we weren't able to do that. So tomorrow, please try to get some work in for me. We're going to have our review tomorrow, and we're going to have our uh, discussion. So uh, let me end the meeting for now, and uh, let me actually... Stop recording.